Look at somebody and say, I am unstoppable. Whatever you thought you lost, whatever is taken from you, God will compensate you. All things work together for good to those who are called according to his what? Purpose. All things. May your life attract people that have something to do with your destiny. Ladies and gentlemen, a prophecy is about to be fulfilled now. It says, for now shall the yoke. In the recent time, I just have burden, I just have burden concerning this yoke. Burden is on people. I just have burden on this. I, I seem not to get away from it. It's like daily God is loading me with information in this season. And somebody's here this morning. Your journey into total freedom has just begun. If your amen is louder, then I know that I'm speaking to you. I'm going to break it down so that you will understand what the yokes are. I'm going to break them down. It's not just a wooden instrument. A wooden instrument is just pointing to us what they are. But there are spiritual yokes, you don't see them. They are spiritual. You don't see them. But all that happens is that you are manifesting them. One of them is the yoke of unfruitfulness. The yoke of what? Unfruitfulness. Unfruitfulness. When this yoke is upon a man, he labors without evidence. You know, if you, if you look at those animals, by the time they finish plowing the ground and they plant corn, would they bring the animals to eat the corn? No, no. If they plant rice, they are not bringing the cows to eat the rice. They labor without harvest. When the yoke of unfruitfulness is on you, you struggle. Everybody knows you are doing something. Everybody knows that you are very, 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 very active person. No dull moment. But at the end of the day, there is no evidence to prove. No evidence to show that this is my labor. And you continue. No evidence. Why? Because of this yoke, certain things are put in place to swallow whatever you are bringing. The yoke of unfruitfulness. Jesus was coming one day and he saw a tree full of leaves and branches and looking so greenish. And Jesus said, no, he was hungry. He said, there is, there, this, this must have fruits. Only for him to get there and look at it. It looked so greenish and there was no fruit at all. Jesus got angry and cursed the tree. I've always wondered, why will you call the tree? Until I read somewhere in Isaiah, he said, I broke the stones. I gathered them together and I planted a choice tree. And I put people to take care of it. And I expected it to produce fruits. And it produced nothing. He said, judge me. Between me and this, my vineyard. 
He said in John chapter 15 verse 16, I have chosen you, I have ordained you that you go and produce fruit and that your fruit will remain. You are the vineyard of God and he expects fruits. Unfruitfulness goes beyond having baby. He's talking about the labor of your hand. You are an engineer. It's not being an engineer. What does engineering produce? You're a medical doctor. It's not enough to be one. What do you produce as a medical doctor? God expects fruits. As a believer, God expects fruits. That you should have spiritual children. The next day as they came, they saw the tree and Peter was shocked that the tree withered. For Jesus said, no man shall eat of you anymore. May that not be said of you if I hear somebody say amen. amen. What is it that is making you not to produce fruit? Yokes. Somebody say yokes. Yoke of unfruitfulness. Yoke. A life without evidence. A life that has existed for years without evidence. You know what this yoke does? It makes you look gorgeous. You have nothing to prove you're gorgeous. That this is who you are. You, you look like a rich man, but you are empty. That's what the yoke does. You look like a rich man. A rich woman. When you put on what people have dashed to you, you look so gorgeous. You look wealthy. You shake keys, you gather together from somewhere. And when people see you outside, they think that leg's just packed there. It's yours. But it's not yours. You look like a married woman, but you have never married. You look like a mother and you had no child. Look like a father. You, people uh, greet you. Good morning, sir. How about your family? Your children say they are fine, but you've never married. That's what the yoke does. That you existed, you look like this, but that is not who you are in reality. I prove to you. First Chronicles chapter 9. First Chronicles chapter 4. Please give me very quickly. First Chronicles chapter 4. Please listen to this. Go to, okay. The sons of Judah, Phares, Hezron, and Kami, and Hor, and Shobal. Now watch this. And Rhea, the son of Shobal, begat Jehat. And Jehat begat Ahomai and Lahad. These are the families of Zoratites. I know you don't like to read places like that. And these, we are of the father of Etam, Jezreel, and Aishma, and Ibash, and the name of their sister was Hezalophim. Gone. And Penuel, the father of Gedor, and Ezra, the father of Husha. These are the sons. Of her, the firstborn of Ephrata, the father of Bethlehem, and Asher, the father of Tekor, had two wives, Hela and Nara. And Nara bare him Ahuzam, and Hepha, and Temeni, and Hasha, Shatri, had what? These were the sons of. Nara and the sons of Hela were Zaret and Jezoa and Etam. And Koz begat Enud and Zobeba and the families of Ahahel, the son of Haram. And Jabez was more honorable. Now the question is this. This, from the beginning, we are talking about families. We are talking about the father, 
begat this, begat this. All of a sudden, after verse 8, we now saw a different story. Just has no connection. Why? An error occurred. Every hidden destiny helper be made visible in the name of Jesus. I've come to announce to somebody that the season of celebration has just started. May your life attract people that have something to do with your destiny. This week, this week is your week of testimony. Unlimited testimony. Somebody shout and receive it. Are you listening to me here? An error occurred. And Jabez, look, the introduction is fantastic. And Jabez was more honorable than his what? Brethren. And his mother, his mother called, this is the error that occurred. All we are reading, men gave names to their children. But this one, error took place. There was something. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. If you want to understand, understand. But if you choose not to understand, nobody's going to force you. There is no complete deliverance if the deliverance is not done connecting to the family you come from. No devil is troubling you anywhere except the ones that are connected to your family altars. Are you listening to me? I do not care what people are teaching. You know why? We are living in the evil day. We are men choose what they want to hear. Complete deliverance has to deal with the, where your root come from. Stop cutting the branches and face reality. Face re reality. We graduated over 150 students yesterday from the School of Deliverance online. And there are many of you here, you don't even know what we are talking about. Have you gone for deliverance? Yes. At the end of the service, you line up to see me. And your problem is a problem of deliverance. Have you gone there? Yes. That was when I came in 1998. And failed to know that the revelation is progressive. That you are already updated. That whatever you came for deliverance then is what you knew then. There are new issues that have risen as a result of the age you have entered into. And you don't understand the issues that occur with times and season. Time-sensitive issues. There are things that will not show up until you get married. Certain things will not show up until you get to a certain age. Certain things will not show up until you come to a certain level of achievement before they show up. Look at that scriptures there. His mother called him Jabez, saying, you don't need any interpretation. Because I bear him with what? He didn't say I bear him in sorrow. I gave birth to him with sorrow. So, boy, sorrow follows you. The question is this, where was his father? No, where was his father? Who ought to have given him a name? John the Baptist 
When they want to give him a name, his family gathered. And that's what we are doing. We gather families that have nothing to do with your, the naming of your children. They give names to your children. The family gathered. They say he should be called Zachariah Jr. If you are a junior, what did your father senior did? What did he achieve? If the senior didn't achieve anything, so what would the junior do? Or you don't know that junior is lesser than the senior? You gather people that have nothing to do with the destiny of life God gave to you to monitor. They come and give names. Say it's our culture. They say you should be called John Day. You should be called Zachariah the second. The mother said no, not so. Somebody said not so. Not so. <laughs>